Hey everybody, Jeff Manchester here. Welcome to another Let's Play video. Today, Espressivo from Sound of Kinetic. Brand new library from these guys. I say Espressivo, you know what I mean? If you say Expressivo, you can close this window and leave and go to Starbucks and get an Espresso because that's not how it's pronounced. Espressivo. Anyway, if you've been to the Let's Play uh, series before on the channel, you know how this works. I play a demo composed entirely of the library, almost entirely, <laughs> of the library that we're exploring. And then I talk about the library, its features. I talk about my mixing and all that stuff. We really get into it. So all the sounds you're about to hear in the demo came from Espressivo. Let's jump right in. And then after the jump, we'll dig into this new uh, sample library from these guys. Check it out. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure what I'll call this track yet. Maybe uh, Mar-a-Lago Down or something. I don't know. But um, it's very heavily inspired from Paul Thomas Anderson's 2007 film, There Will Be Blood, namely the Johnny Greenwood, obviously, soundtrack. Namely, it's the Johnny Greenwood soundtrack. It's a track called Proven Lands. Um, actually, it's funny. I actually emailed. I didn't email, but I Facebook Sonic Kinetic about this. I was like, can you guys, are you guys working on anything like atonal and sort of weird and wonderful and you know a la Johnny Greenwood and they're like stick around maybe who knows and they delivered they were actually working on this or they assembled the R&D team and spent a whole bunch of money after I I messaged them on Facebook I'm not really sure which which one it was but anyway thank you so much for making this guys this is great this is so much fun um especially if you own other sonokinetic libraries this is sort of like the connective tissue I find this is the details the filigree the the stuff in between the big sweeping passages. It also works very well on its own, as I've hopefully demonstrated here, but if you have the big Capriccio and Grosso and all the rest of those libraries, this will really sort of connect the dots and sort of fill in the cracks and all the rest of it, I think, this library. So before I dive into how I mixed it and all the rest of it, I think it's important to walk through just the basic layout of Espressivo. There will be way more competent professional um, tutorials on Sonic Connect's website. But just if we're going to go through this, you guys got to know what's happening here. So you've obviously noticed green, yellow, blue, and I guess it's like an auburn, brown, red. I'm not really sure. Um, green is strings, brass is yellow, blue is woodwinds, and the brown is percussion. And they correspond in color to what's happening down here on the keys. So the first row of C's our strings and we can see this uh, by the um, icon here C D E now you'll also notice one two three four up here these correspond to the rows of C's where we are on the keyboard so if I go up an octave to this next set of C's you see it change from two so we go one and then two and then three final row of C's here on my keyboard okay so you guys kind of get the picture um, so C D E are the strings if we go down the black keys are woodwinds and F the brass starts at G and the black keys are the percussion Now, how do I get those sounds? Well, as is custom with Sonokinetics libraries, click on the color in the minimal sort of style here, and you will get a bunch of options. And for example, if I click on rhythmic slow, actually rhythmic fast, I'll click on this. 
I get a preview, but if I click on it again, I, I get a preview of that same passage in different octaves, low, mid, and high. Now, not all passages will have those um, octaves or flavors available. You'll have to click around and see, but if I click once more, you'll get a different octave. Like, sort of click once, click twice, click three times, you'll get sort of the different flavors of this phrase. So, have a listen. <laughs> guys get the picture? So that is, in a nutshell, the sort of phrase pick and play system that they have here. The crosshairs will allow you to go in under the hood and do some mod wheel stuff, control the va volume, the panning, the tuning, the cross fading and fading, and the tail, which is kind of like the decay. And I find that if you get your, you get your um, mod wheel and tail game set up, you can get some really nice fades in and out of all your passages, making things sound very natural. If they don't, of course, but they probably will because this is a very well phrased and uh, scripted little library from Sonokinetic. Now let's just start at the very top here, percussion drone. So again, I wanted this to be plotting. This isn't actually percussion um, in the sense of we're playing, you know, skins with a stick. This is actually strings. Have a listen. <laughs> So I got this patch by clicking on this, going to Rhythmic, Fast, and then I think it's here. Yeah, right there. I made my selection, and that was that. And this will continue, I guess, almost till the sort of third act of the track over here. It just has a nice sort of sinewy vibe that I really liked, and I added to that sort of sinewy vibe with Decapitator from Sound Toys. And uh, I chose the high crispy mix preset and I made some tweaks. So here's before. And here's with it on. Off, on. I don't know, it just gives it like a, a brittle kind of vibe, like it might fall apart. I don't know. There's something about it I really liked and I just wanted to accentuate it. It's totally subjective, obviously. We're panned, by the way, right at midnight, which it is well past. Oh my god, three in the morning. Okay, let's move on to uh, another instance of the sort of percussive drone that I have here. And this is just to sort of add a bit of weight to the one that's already happening above it. And I will prove it to you by clicking here and you can see that I have the, the exact same patch. Uh, I think I might have detuned it. Did I? Yes, I've detuned it down here. Usually it's up here, but I've detuned it. And that will sound like this with the other one soloed. Wait for it to come in. So I've I panned it a touch to the right. I haven't done any effects on it because I kind of like the way that it sounds, especially in contrast to the brittle nature of the one above. And I have, I believe, another instance of this, the same patch that's sort of coming in and adding even more weight, and I have it panned to the left. So at this point, when we have all three of them together, we gotta be careful about our volume, our loudness, I should say. Volume is like, you know, beakers and stuff. We should, as audio people say, loudness. Um, so I've got this, you know, down about 6.6 .6 dBs. These guys are probably at unity. Yeah, they're in zero, so that's nice. But, you know, you, when you're doubling things up, you wanna be careful, okay? Um, and I've got this one panned to about 10 o'clock, all right, on the pan pot. Now, uh, what comes next? Some additional percussion down here, and now we might be moving into a new category of patches. Let's see what this sounds like. Now, that might sound kind of funny because it's got a weird sort of almost pan chorusy effect on it, but that's only because it sounds so friggin' cool in the mix. So let's back up a little bit and wait for it to come in. Okay, so that's 
So the reason it sounds so kind of strange is because I have the Pan Man on it, and I love the Pan Man. It's doing this weird distorted vibrato or, you know, I don't know, vibro pan. Um, here's with it off, just so you can hear what the patch sounds like. Okay, so obviously you're hearing a little bit of fluctuation in the output gain, and that's because I've got the mod wheel, which is manipulating the volume here just to give it a bit of life. But that's what it sounds like. It's got a lot more attack and a lot more texture, but there's so much going on in the track, I just wanted it to kind of go crazy and stand out. So here's with it in the mix. Let's see if I can catch enough MIDI to make this really impactful. <laughs> To me, this sounds way better. Let me turn it on. It just has like an invaders from space kind of sound, which I love. So if I go into contact, you can see where I got it. It's this right here. And these look like little arrows pointing down, 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 down. Uh, I'll play it again. Let's play it with this off because in solo, it might kind of drive you to blow your brains out. Okay, so that's where I got that from. Uh, if I click on it, you know, we can hear different variations of it. And this comes from the dense rhythmic section here. You know, I could have gone in a different direction, but I was quite fond of that. So. That's that, and that is panned right up the center, just because at this point I'm okay with a nice mono percussion going right up the middle. Mono is usually my favorite position for um, for anything percussion or bass, depending, of course, on what the cue calls for. Now, let's go to this next thing here. What is this? Yeah, I've, I've called this clock percussion. Okay, if I open this up, we can take a look. It comes from three and a lovely sort of xylophone, I'm assuming. Just sounds beautiful. That's where we got the earlier one. Kind of washerboard style there, but anyway, that's where I got this from and I'm not doing anything to it. It just sounds great on its own because the, the the clouds sort of part here at this moment in the song, right? Look at bar nine. Is that bar nine? Everything sort of falls away. So I don't really have to EQ anything because it's not competing with a lot of other information. If it was, if let's say I had other high-end information happening somewhere else, I might want to make sure that both can sort of play together and be heard. But I was really happy with the way that things sort of separated. And so I didn't feel the need to EQ anything and make sure that it wasn't clashing with any other sort of high-end information. So next, I've got my fierce strings. So if I click on this, I had a compressor on here and then I took it off. I didn't get rid of it completely, but... You'll hear what this is. Now, I mean, this library really kicks ass when it comes to strings. That's what we have here. Uh, let's just have a listen to it, maybe soloed. Here it comes. Go down an octave. Okay, so this is pretty, you know, it's panned up right at the middle. It's right in your face, and that's what I like about it. Um, yeah, this came from the strings patch, which is green again. Um, this is melodic and broken. Uh, where do I, where did I get it from? There we go. Now that's obviously what it sounds like, just sort of on its own. So expressive, right? Um, very titular. It's very expressive, uh, like the title of the library suggests. So anyway, that's just playing throughout here. Let's hear it in the mix. OK, 
Okay, so here, here's something important. So what I've done here is you can see that we've dropped you know, these two phrases. This one starts off very, uh, it's, it's high end, right? These fierce strings. Okay, now because I decided to go down an octave, I guess, um, you know, I go from high to low. That's why I feel like I can bring in this this track I have called In Between Elements, because the low end is more present in this phrase. It's more mid, low, mid, heavy. So that's why I feel like, okay, I'm not worried about competing with anything. Now I can bring in this In Between Element, which is very high. It's a lot of high information, a lot of high cycles, high frequency stuff, right? And that's one of this library's strengths, by the way, is the sort of uneasy, like, ugh, what's happening? Am I being abducted by aliens vibe of some of these gorgeous string patches? This one comes from pads, textures, short. I think it's down here. Play with a few different other ones. Okay, now we heard a little bit of this, I think, in um, uh, Sato, but now we have a bit more hair on them. They're a bit more, a bit more dangerous sounding, which I quite like. So that's where that comes in. And I made that choice to introduce this, not just because I wanted something to fill the gap when this goes down, but also because, again, I'm playing the low stuff in the fear strings. Therefore, I feel like, okay, cool, let's bring another high-end instrument into focus. And that's a little sort of mixing tip. Let's not have too many high things clashing. Let's sort of make sure there's a lot of contrast between high, low, and mid, blah, blah, blah. So, and they're also panned, you know, to about 10 o'clock. Um, okay, what's next? Supplementary strings down here. Now that's a pretty full set right there. That In that case, I, I think I'm playing C, D, and E from the strings patch. If I go back... Yeah, you see I've got C, D, E depressed there on the strings. Now usually I gotta be careful, right, because too much, um, too much high, low, and mid information on just one track, when I've got high, low stuff happening all over the place in the mix, that can get kind of muddy and silly, and I don't want to have to pull up my, you know, I don't want to have to EQ and pan and all the rest of it. But in this case, this was the sort of saturation point of the mix of the cue. So we had things fairly well separated. I really wanted to add to, to the sort of calamity and the craziness of everything. And as you know, you notice right here, I've really ratcheted it up. Uh, with this additional percussion. So if I solo this, I mean, um, additional percussion two. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? You, you will in just a moment. Let me turn the pan man back on and go to... I mean, it's supposed to be invaders from space. It's supposed to be crazy. So at this point, I'm, I'm being a little indulgent in the mix, but I'm allowing that because this is the climax of the song. Um, okay, let's keep moving, shall we? Um, and the strings are panned to midnight. I could have panned them a little differently, but you know, you don't want to pan something with high, low, and mid information. It's already panned pretty well in the stereo field in the actual instrument of Espressivo. You don't want to pan that too hard left or right because then it gets it gets a bit weird. Um, What's happening down here? I've got some string stabs panned slightly to the left. I think these are just to accent the sort of gaps in between. That's right. So here comes another one. Now that sounds a bit funny, doesn't it? That's because I'm using the mod wheel, as you can see here in the automation lane. Let's see if I can bring up the automation down here. Yeah, so we can see the automation going from all the way down here, you know, almost to 127, which is the top for the CC message, all the way down. And the reason I'm doing that, I'm, I'm choking at the sample, because if I were to let the mod wheel, if I didn't do any mod wheel stuff, or actually, you know what, if I extended this sample all the way to here, it would sound like this. You know, I don't want that. 
I just want the initial attack of that phrase. And now that might sound kind of funny, right? Like, I, I don't want the whole phrase. I just want the bada, bada. You know, that's all I want. But it, it might sound funny sort of on its own. But when I unsolo it, you can't even tell that I'm choking out the phrase with the mod wheel and also with my MIDI decisions to, to shorten that event. <laughs> So you can be kind of sneaky, you know what I mean guys? You can be kind of sneaky by playing fast and loose with the truth of these audio events by turning them in a little bit if you just want, you know, if you just want a little bit of a phrase. You don't have to have the whole thing. You can just like you, know, you can just you can download a trial of it. You don't need the whole thing. But you got to be careful and also do some mod wheel stuff down here to really choke out the sample to make sure that nothing decays. Now of course I could have gone into um, Espressivo and I could have changed the the fades and stuff and I think I probably did on this patch uh, there's not enough time to go through everything but I, I, I'm just saying you can be economical and um, you know just make the library yours and uh, manipulate it how you want to so what's happening next so those are the string stabs let's just sort of hear those in context <laughs> Okay, uh, what's coming up next? Oh, they're panned a little bit to the left. Uh, what's happening next? If I turn off the cycle, go to crescendo. Oh, this sounds great. Boom. Just beautiful crescendos here, guys, in the Espressivo library. Oh, my goodness. Uh, this is from percussion. Now, there are only two patches. Uh, sorry, there are only two categories of instrument that, conta that contain crescendi. It's the percussion. Now you can make your own crescendi from the ones that don't, but I should tell you, it's it's um, it's actually not a weak spot of the library. But I wish that all I wish that all the library, all, all the uh, instruments had crescendi patches. If I go to brass, we don't see them. If I go to strings, we don't see them. The only two that have them are woodwinds, right here, and percussion. Now this is not a deal breaker. Obviously, it just would have been nice but it's all good because uh, again some of the patches some of the you know some of what's happening in here sound very much like um, crescendos you know you can choke them to make them sound like crescendos but uh, like yeah for example melodic you know have a listen to this you can just cut that off to make it sound like a crescendo you know you can just see from the visual what it's going to sound like let's have a listen to this one you know what I mean? That's a crescendo. But I'm just saying, dedicated crescendo patches in a couple more would have been nice. But you know, we're kind of spoiled with this library. I think. I think it's. I think. It's, I think it's terrific. Um, what's next here? We have some. Well, why don't we just hear this in context, just so you know, it makes sense. That sort of welcomes the clock percussion up here. Uh, woody crescendo, now we're getting into our, into our crescendos here. Another, again, as I said, percussion and woodwinds, they've got the crescendos, crescendis. Beautiful. Hear it in context. You guys can see here some mod wheel stuff. Just the volume, right? Just the output mm, coming up to 127 all the way. Um, now this is really cool. Mood percussion right here. This just sort of welcomes the percussion drone up top. It's just sort of giving your brain something to think about. This is just, I don't know, maybe I'll come up with a word for it, but this is just the stuff that sort of keeps you interested when a track is starting. You know, it's setting the stage. If it wasn't there, you would miss it. You know, so let's just play the solo version of it. I'm doing some mod wheel stuff. When you see those little ridges, that's all mod wheel. And so, of course, it's down here to the automation. Have a listen. Let's do it in context. <laughs>
Okay, now if I wanted to be super tricky, you know, I could have done it hard left and hard right, and that would have been kind of fun. So I could have done something like this with automation. Have a listen. But I didn't. Anyway, um, let's move on. What's happening over here? Some brass tones. Okay, so that's just sort of accompanying the chaotic stuff that's happening with our phasey, flangey, weird uh, percussion in the chaos moment of the track from the brass patches. <laughs> got that from the brass here so we can see that there's the initial attack the right there uh, and I got that from stabs looped here it is let's keep moving let's keep moving what else do we have dizzy woodwinds another sort of crescendo that I just sort of uh, made with the mod wheel not really a crescendo from the patches, but I made it into one. And I love, I just love the, the physicality. You can hear, um, for lack of a better word, the knobs. I don't know, those little sort of portholes that kind of click up and down as they let air in and out. Professional composers are probably cringing right now that I don't know the name for that, but if I go back and do it again... You know, and I got that down here. Continuous melodic. So remember I was saying before that not all of the patches contain the different octaves, low, mid, and high. This is one of them. So if I click on it once, click on it twice, It's just the same thing over and over. So that is just something to be aware of. So before you really fall in love with one of those guys, those patches, you want to use it in a few different ways, just uh, just make sure that um, it's what you're looking for as far as the range goes. Next, we have some power drums, and these have... They should have the decapitator on them. I guess they don't. Let me turn it on. That's kind of funny. <laughs> If I go back and turn it off, does it sound better? No, it sounds better with it on. Anyway, where did I get this from? Power drums. I got this from the percussion patch, obviously. And here it is down here in the brown. Now, that's not that's not distortion coming from the actual sample phrase library. That's because I have Decapitator on it, which I quite like. And if I turn it off, it sounds like this. Turn it on. That's not really fair because I played a, a higher octave on the second pass. And here's after. I just, it just adds a bit of hair, which I quite like. Um, and this is panned all the way up the center, of course. Woozy textures, we're getting to the final part of the track and almost the sort of end of the video here. I'm gonna solo all of these guys just so you can hear them all, um, all in a row. And there's something, are really some very important sort of mixing tip that I'll get to at the end of this here, but have a listen to them all sort of together. Panned hard left, or hard right, excuse me, hard left and hard right again. And then the brass is all the way up the middle because brass has a lot of low-end information. I keep all my low-end stuff, anything below about 160 hertz, even maybe 100 hertz. To me, that's just mono. That's just simple. Okay, so my aim here was to create a kind of Steve Reich polyrhythm, which is something you can do with these phrases to sort of add a bit of, ah, I don't know, a bit of creative zest in there. 
um, have them sort of alternating and playing at different in different syncopations, if that makes any sense at all. If I go to the woozy texture, this is, you know, it's a woozy texture. It's not actually a rhythm. And if I play it from the beginning here, you'll get a sense. Again, mod wheel, right? Affecting the output gain. So it almost sounds like a, like, what do you call it? Uh, water phone a little bit. If I go in, let's see what I see where I found it. All right, so I'm getting these three right here, which means that it came from here and right there. And of course, they sampled all the different octaves. God love them. You know what I mean? That might be just applying a bit of water to the edge of a goblet or something like that and just going over and over and over and it's just gorgeous the way that this comes in and out. It's so effective. You know, but I have it really playing second fiddle to all these other instruments here. And I'm what I mean by that is it's very low, okay? In the mix. But it's still audible, which is important. Woozy Woodwinds, let's have a listen to these guys here. No automation there, just straight up Woozy Woodwinds. You know, it's sort of disjointed. We're losing our minds. We've elected Trump, what have we done? Um, and I got this from a lovely patch in Woodwinds. I mean, listen to this. I think it's actually from that one. I mean, it's just like the fragments of a thought just falling apart. Drugs, anyone? Um, let's do woozy strings right here. If I unsolo these guys here. You know, it's just, it's like this, these strings are kind of falling downstairs. Add an octave. Add another octave. Create a polyrhythm. Okay. And then finally brass. Um, I guess I should show you where I got the strings from. So, right here. Uh, is it here? No, where is it from? Sorry, I'm just really trying to figure this out now. Did I change the patch? I think I did. I don't know how I did, but I did. Uh, let's see if I can get back to it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I messed it up. It's all good. I'll figure it out later. But if I go back into brass, here's brass. And again, this is rising with the mod wheel. So it's going all the way from about, you know, I don't know, 60 or 70 all the way to 127 in the CC messages. So that concludes this sort of walkthrough. Um, oh, by the way, something really important that I, wa that I wanted to bring up. Um, connective tissue between sections of a song. This is so key, guys. I listen to a lot of tracks, and it's so obvious they were composed in a kind of MIDI environment. That's because people aren't kind of taking the time to add gaps in between the major moments in the song. So what I mean by that is have a listen, see if I can get enough MIDI here 
to really show you what I mean. So if I back up here, let's see if I can hear it and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> Okay, so there's a section, it happens, you know, right, like right here, basically, if you can see where I'm extending my square. From here to here, we have the supplementary strings, and we also have some information happening in the brass and in the, um, the woozy sort of textures, not so much in the woodwinds, but in the strings. And listen to how the two sort of join together. <laughs> It's hard to sort of describe, but basically the two act as sort of connective tissue between each section of the song. What I hear a lot from people are big sort of sweeping moments where we have the intro, the end, the middle part, whatever, and we don't have a lot of stuff connecting the two together. It's okay to start your sample patches, your, your MIDI patches in between moments to have a little bit of, like I said, start and end connective tissue between those passages and to really make sure that they fit well with EQ and especially using the mod wheel to control the volume. If I take away, um, you know, maybe this might be a big mistake here, but if I take away some of this and some of this, you know, and maybe a little bit of this, this is what most of the mixes people, I he well, send, not, they don't send this to me, but I hear this a lot. Anyway, if I control Z that, we bring everything back. I mean, listen to the connection and to the continuity by just extending these samples a little bit beyond their range into new bars and new sections of the song. Anyway, hopefully that made sense. It sounds a bit different than it did before. That's <laughs> because I, I've messed up a little, little bit with one of the patches down here in the strings. But anyway, that is Espressivo from Sano Kinetic. Just uh, to me, this is like... This to me is like the favorite, my favorite phrase library they've ever put out. As you guys know, I'm not the kind of guy that looks forward to getting these and then, you know, I try to make like a John Williams score. It's just not me. I like atonal and bizarre and plotting and weird. And I think that's sort of where we're going um, as composers in, you know, in the sort of musical film music world. We're, we're moving away from traditional stuff and, and more towards emotive uh, expressive stuff and I think that this library is a very welcome addition kind of like the Spitfire LCO thing where we're sort of going into more sort of a tonal foreign impro imp improvisational territory so this is a welcome addition I think into the canon of phrase lies from phrase libraries from Sonokinetic. kinetic I'm getting tired and, um, and 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 sample libraries in general uh, for us uh, emerging composers here at our computers so thank you so much to Sonokinetic kinetic for letting me play with this and yeah, leave a comment, like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah.